All right, so this is a super common SAT English question that has to deal with grammar and is very likely to show up on your SAT exam. So it says, in 2018, a team of researchers led by Dr. Caitlin Whaling compiled every available measurement of ocean mixing rates from the past two decades. With this novel data set, the team was able to determine how current-driven mixing varies across blank and what impact it has had on the distribution of heat and nutrients in the ocean. The question says, which choice completes the text so that it conforms to the conventions of standard English? And we have all, all of our answer choices in terms of regions. All right, so the first answer choice I'm going to cross off, which is completely wrong, is B, right? We do not use a colon in this uh, text. And why is that? Well, usually typically you use colons for either explanations or lists, right? But if we did insert regions colon, um, you have to realize that what comes here, what impact it has had on the distribution of heat and nutrients is not dependent on whatever we had back here, right? The current driven mixing varies across regions is not what determines the impact it has on the distribution of heat and nutrients. What determines this is the novel data set, right? So all of this, um, let me just erase this, this entire sentence right here in blue, that is one independent clause, okay? And you have to realize that if I were to split this, what impact it has had on the distribution of heat and nutrients in the ocean, that does not make sense on its own, and therefore it is a dependent clause, all right? And that's for similar reason why we're going to eliminate answer choice C, right? Use a semicolon to separate two independent clauses. And like we said before, what impact it has had on the distribution of heat and nutrients in the ocean is a dependent clause. And now we are down to two answer choices, and these are probably the two that you might get stuck up on. And that is either, do you have a comma before the end, or do you not have a comma before the end? Well, this is going to boil back down to the dependent independent clause. Okay. You have to realize that um, you have to read within context, essentially, right? So with this novel data set, so you're using the novel data set and you're able to come up with conclusions, right? So with this novel data set, the team was able to determine all this, right? And with the novel data set, they were also able to determine what impact it has had on the distribution of heat and nutrients, right? So therefore, A is wrong. Right. If we were to insert a comma right here, what that would imply is essentially that what comes after is a independent clause, which is not true. Right. It's a dependent clause. Um, and so an independent clause would work on its own and have a separate idea. Whereas, like we said before, with this novel data set is what actually determines the impact it has had on the distribution of heat and nutrients. So since those two actually coincide with each other, our answer choice is going to be D. There is no comma before and.